Yeah. 
sit there and listen to those lyrics. You know, fear is not something that comes from the Lord, is it? Fear is something that comes from our flesh, from our sin, from the evil one. And I tell you what, I mean, uh, when you just give it over, uh, fear, it just it just goes away. God is in control. He is, he is the, the great orchestrator of all things, and uh, it's just a joy to be able to be here. And uh, You guys are in for a treat this morning. I, got, I, I want to tell you that. But before we get to Sven, I want to uh, welcome the, the, the men home from the Philippines. Um, Carl, I, I've heard nothing but great news, great stories, and, and what a joy, what an answer to prayer you guys are. Um, everything went well from what I've heard. Uh, many, many hundreds came to Christ. Um, they, uh, they saw what you guys saw about a thousand people in the clinic over, over the course of the, over the week. And it's just an amazing thing. So welcome all my friends. Thanks for being here. Uh, a couple of quick announcements. Um, we have two events coming up within uh, just a few days of each other. Saturday is our men's breakfast here at 730. Up some bacon on Friday, and yes, yes we are. We always do that. Um, and our very own Mark Burke is uh, sharing his testimony. He's a great man of God. If you don't know him, yes, if you do not know this man, he's got a story that will blow your hair back. And uh, he, it's a great joy. Thank you for stepping up. He told me when I asked him to speak, he says, "I'm ready, in season and out." So it's just a, it's just a natural thing. So uh, come in, uh, and join us Saturday, 0730 right here. I understand also that Gus is coming back tomorrow. Uh, I mean, I know some of you in this room may not know who Gus Bess is. Because he's been gone for a while. We're going to have to like, do a reintroduction when he gets here. But, uh, he should be back uh, with us next Wednesday. On Monday... Uh, down at Thousand Hills Ranch is our M6 dinner. Uh, there's only about 300 guys there. No cost to anybody. The price has already been paid. And the food that we have there is out of sight. It is very, very special. That is uh, Monday, 6 o'clock, 1800, for us military folks. At Thousand Hills Ranch, if you don't know where that is, uh, get with me or get with Mark, get with Dan, uh, and we can get directions for you. Our speaker that night down there is our very own uh, Dan Dow. If you have not heard this man's testimony, um, he's a dear friend of mine, and you're, you're a great joy, my friend. And uh, he's our district attorney, if you guys don't know that, in this county, so you're going to hear a story uh, on Monday that will uh, Okay? Questions? Answers? Answers? <laughs> Boy. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, at what time is it? Not 6.15. It's called M6. Because it, we're get, we get underway at 1800. Right on the nose. Uh, yes, sir. you to a man. Many of you have heard him before. Uh, Sven Axel Conrad uh, hails to us um, all the way from Denmark. His uh, ministry is uh, called Impact People International. He is transformed. He has turned Tanzania on its ear for God. And the his testimony is absolutely extraordinary. The stories that he tells of how God has worked uh, through him in Tanzania is is just amazing. Uh, he's been in the ministry for over 40 years, you guys, and um, that's a long time. That's like four decades. And uh, I want you to uh, welcome really heartily 
with a, with a great shout unto the Lord, our friend, um, Ax, or Sven Axel Conrad. Come up here, brother. Thank you. Love you. Thank you. Good morning. It's like being home coming here. So I'm back home now. Wow, it's so good to see all of you. Thank you. Just come from Minnesota. Been there a month. Some of you will remember that I remarried for 18 months ago. So I'm here with Jenny now. We've been in Minnesota having meetings there in Iowa, North Dakota, South Dakota. And then we took a five days road trip to the Grand Canyons and Bryce Canyons and whatever. And now we're here for nearly a month, and then we're going back to Denmark, and when it starts to get cold, we fly back to the warmer country, <laughs> Africa. <laughs> it's so good to be here. I would like to share with you this morning something that's extraordinary that's happening right now. Uh, I want to open a window so you can peek in and see what's happening in the part of the world where I work. I've told my story before that God called me into reconciliation ministry where I work with trying to gather the body of Christ together from all denominations and proclaim we are one body and Jesus only has one body and we need to work together. Yeah, and at the same time, when we started this, after there were attacks from radical Muslims on pastors, Catholic priests, there were killings, there were burnings of churches, and a calling for jihad. Then we started praying, but at the same time as we started praying, we said, now it's a time to love the Muslims. And uh, regarding fear, there is a fear everywhere we go in the world. There are people fearing, believing that the Muslims are going to take over the world. And even here, I hear it all the time, and I see it in the faces of people that they're fearing. But there is another story that I want to tell you. God is moving in the Muslim world as never before in history. There is a move of God right now that is blow, blowing our mind. It's happening right now. And uh, I believe we are standing on the brink of the greatest revival ever in the Muslim world. And it's typical of God because when a giant comes up against you, and fear comes rolling against you, God does something and he can change the whole situation. And I believe he is still on the throne. And he who said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall never prevail against it, he still is standing behind those words. Today, millions of Muslims are turning to Jesus Christ all over the world. There are so many God-fearing Muslims that are, that are so tired of the hatred and violence and killing they see everywhere. And this has opened the door now, so many of them are turning to Jesus. We hear so much negative, but I want to tell you a positive story today. The last month when we were in Tanzania, I've been traveling with one of these guys God has called out of the Muslim culture and made him an undercover evangelist. Uh, when he was five years old, this man, this young boy, his dad was one of the most prominent imams in the western part of Tanzania and Kigoma. And he sent his son to a, a, a Quran school where he should just learn to recite the Quran. From he was five years old, he never went to a normal school because that was worldly. Didn't go to a normal school, went to a Quran school until he was about 15 years old, never learned to read and write. And then uh, some of his friends told him, what are you going to do when you want to marry? Because you, in Tanzania, they write a proposal letter to a girl. And they said, wouldn't it be embarrassing? You have to come to us, your friends, and ask us to write a, a letter of proposal to this girl. And when she answers you, we'll have to read it for you. Don't you think that'll be embarrassing? And he started thinking as a 15-year-old. So without his parents knowing, he enrolled into an elementary school. Now, just imagine, all the others are six, seven years old, short guys, and here comes this 15 years old. He told me he won all the races in class one. <laughs> and uh, 
the next seven years, he went to the Quran school in the afternoon. But in the morning, he enrolled at elementary school. For seven years, his parents didn't know. And when his dad discovered it, he got really mad. Uh, when he was 22, Jesus appeared to him in a dream. And he saw Jesus at night standing in a white robe with eyes as shining fire. And he said, Ramadan, what, you've served Satan long enough. Now is the time to serve me. But he chased Jesus away and cursed him. It happened the second and the third night. The third night, Jesus appeared with two angels, Gabriel and Michael. But still, he chased them away. The very next morning, he told his dad, Dad, I'm having these appearances at night. Uh, and he gathered all the imams in the area and they tried to drive out these jinns, the spirits of him. And he said, you're not going to be, uh, have these appearances anymore. But the very next day, he met Jesus physically on the street of Kigoma. He was going there with his friends. His friends didn't hear Jesus or see him, but he saw him. And he said, I, ha I can't go with you today. I have to do something. And he went to a friend and said, take me to a pastor. And he went to this pastor and he accepted Jesus. When he came home, at a distance, his father saw him coming and said, don't come near my home. I can see you become a Christian. He could see. And uh, it ended up with him that his dad told some gangs to catch him and tie him up and bring him home, dead or alive. And they brought him home. And all the imams of the area came with his dad, and all of them had big sticks. And his dad said, we're going to beat this Jesus out of you. And they started beating one. His dad started beating with a thick stick until the stick broke. And then the next imam took over, and the next, and the next, and the next. And all these imams beat him up. But he said, Dad, I cannot leave Jesus. Amen. Then his dad got so angry, so he said, untie his hand, bring a log. Put his hand on, his, on the log and he took a machete and he said, I'm going to cut your finger one by one until you come back to Islam and deny this new Jesus you have learned to get. No. And he put his hand and he started cutting the tip of one of his fingers. And he said, Dad, I cannot leave my Jesus. And then he cut the next tip, the next finger. And he said, Dad, I'm not leaving Jesus. Then the next, the Imam, next in charge of the whole area, interrupted and said, Asuman, if you keep on torturing your son, you'll end up killing him in this home. And I am not going to witness this. Because Tanzania has a law that you are allowed to convert into another religion. And he said, I'm going to report you to the police. So his dad got scared and loosened the, uh, this guy. So he ran away and he didn't come home for 17 years. But he went into a refugee's camp where he met a pastor who was trained. But he, left, he came to Bible school and afterwards now he's an undercover evangelist. Let me just say, after 17 years, in 2017, he came back to his family, his dad, for the first time after being abandoned. And when his dad saw the sun coming, he stood in the window, uh, I'm sorry, in the, in the door, and said, my son, I am ready to accept your Jesus as my Savior now. And, and at the doorsteps, he bowed his knee and he accepted Jesus. Now, this man, he's doing radio broadcasts, talking to Muslims all over East Africa. One day he received a call. A lady said, my husband wants to see you. Can you come and meet him? And he went there. He was the, like the archbishop of all the imams in the area. And they sat with an Arab Bible and he showed him that Jesus is more than a prophet. And he kind of told them, well, if Jesus did this and this and this and this and all these miracles, who do you say he is? And they come up with, he must be more than a prophet. He must be God. And he accepted Jesus. And he told this man who's called Ezra, come back next day, now next week. And I will gather five, four other imams and we can sit and discuss the Bible. That next week, the four other imams accepted Jesus as a savior. And right now, this is happening now. He has led more than 3,000 Muslims to Jesus and hundreds, <laughs> hundreds, 
Hundreds of Muslim priests, imams, are coming to Christ right now. He had a call from Mtwara, which is on the, uh, on, the, on the border to Mozambique, one of the cities down there. And the imams in the city and the area wanted to ask him questions because of these radio programs. And he came down there. And there were 50 imams gathered in the mosque. This is happening this year. And he answered their questions, told who Jesus was. And this is their source when they speak. This is their source, the Bible. And at the end of the day, the leader of all the imams said, if this is true, what you have been telling us about this book, about this prophet Isa, bin Maryam, then how can I accept him as my Lord and Savior and Messiah? He used that word. And Ezra said, come up here and I'll pray for you. But then the, old, the other 49 imams who were gathered had been there all day said, if our leader wants to accept Jesus as his Lord and Savior and Messiah, so do we. So he prayed for all 50 imams in the mosque. They accepted Jesus. This is so mind-blowing. You know, fear not. They are not going to take over the world. The Jesus who died for all people, he loves these people and he is causing a revolution of love to take place right now. There are five women in the Tanga, that's a, a city in the east coast of Tanzania. They accepted Jesus. And what they are doing, they call it the Discover Bible Study. If you, if, if, if you uh, Google it, you'll see what's happening. A system that Paul and David Watson, a father and a son, missionaries in India long ago, they started gathering people just to see and now Jesus is revealing himself through the scripture. It's powerful. We should try it. <laughs> five people gathered, and these five women gathered, ex experienced Jesus through the scripture. Now they have turned the mosque into a church. I hear testimonies the last uh, weeks before we left Tanzania, we were traveling. Uh, thousands of miles with this guy all over having conferences and he was giving his testimony and pastors and bishops were sitting on the edge of their chairs when Ezra he told the stories and on the way every time we stopped our car you know sometimes people they look for fast food in Tanzania it's uh, difficult there's no no McDonald's on the road but whenever we stopped instead of looking for food he was looking for imams I tell you and whenever I found one he made connection and there is a hunger and a thirst right now in the world that has never been before. Wow, this is so exciting, that what God he is doing. I've had some, uh, you know, missionaries and, 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 and cars is a combination, uh, <laughs> I don't know what to say, old Land Rovers and missionaries. So I've had a lot of breakdowns on, <laughs> when I travel in Tanzania. And the last three... Uh, Last month I had five breakdowns and I had to stay on the roadside for five hours every time waiting for someone to come and rescue me. But every time there was an opportunity to meet people. And this is what is interesting, you know, God always creates opportunities. And I'd been in the Doma, was traveling north to Arusha where I live, and suddenly this car started overheating on the way up in the mountains. So I had to stop and roll down into the village. And this was a village that was predominant Muslim. The only place in all of Tanzania where the first president, Julius Nyerere, was not allowed to come because he was a Catholic. The Muslims were so, um, they were the majority, they didn't want anybody there. And I was, came down, rolling down to this village and stopped at a you can, if I say cafe, you would get a wrong uh, idea. My wife called it a hole in the wall. <laughs> so we stopped there for five hours. And guys came to try and repair my car with super glue. The radiator had burst, and they thought they could make it with super glue and green tea they poured in, but nothing helped. Okay, that's another story. But as I was sitting there, there was a cafe, and I went in to, to have lunch there. And I saw there were three guys, 
One was the imam of the area, the chairman of the village, and another guy. And suddenly the Lord spoke to me and said, tell them you want to pay for their meal today. So I said, guys, I want to pay for your meal. And if you want to drink anything, just order it. And they looked at me and said, who are you? And I said, I just want you to know a pastor came through and he had some blessing with this. And at the end of their meal, I happened to say, uh, I was very unlucky, my car broke down. And they said, this was not you being unlucky. This was God who brought you here to us to tell us what you've told us today. And then the chairman of the village and the Muslim imam said, next time you come, tell us in advance. We'll gather all the village of 3,000 people and we'll ask you to bless us. And I said, if you ask me to bless, you know I'll only, I'll only do it in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, the Son of God. And they said, that's what we want you to do. So I break down, opened our way, oh, <laughs> and it happens all over. So God gives opportunity, and it's so exciting. Now, just before I left, I'll just tell you this, and then I'll go into the scripture, okay? <laughs> just before I left Tanzania, we're sitting at a home with this man, and he says, oh, if you go to Europe, he didn't know I was coming here, I have two prayer requests. One is, we need Bibles. In Arusha, you cannot get an Arabic Bible right now because the imams have bought them all. It's fantastic. <laughs> and Swahili Bibles. And then he said, you know, it's not safe for me to travel with all these public vehicles. Could you pray that I will get a vehicle? Okay. We came home to Denmark. Three days later, we went to Sweden on a preaching tour. I stepped near Copenhagen, stopped near Copenhagen to visit some friends and have a cup of coffee. You know, we like coffee in Denmark too. So I was sitting there with my wife and these two guys, uh, uh, my friend Kim and his wife, and I told the story of Ezra and I told this. And suddenly he rose and went into his office and came with a bunch of $100 notes and threw them on the table and said, I have been saving to go hunting in Wisconsin, deer hunting. And all this money is for my hunting trip. But how can I ever go hunting when I hear this man needs a car? Take the money and buy a car for him. And three weeks ago, he, re he got his car. So God is doing miracles everywhere. Well, I could tell you hundreds of stories from now on until Christmas. But I guess that we'll have to go on. Wow. I'm so excited to see that reconciliation among the ch body of Christ results in... We have to love these guys, no matter how threatening they are. Even if we know they want to burn our churches and kill us, but the love of Christ conquers all fear. The love of Jesus Christ will change every situation. And you guys, I can see the love of God shining in you. So let's change the world by just sharing Jesus with others in a very natural way. Amen? Amen? I went into a, 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 an Indian shop in Dodoma, one of the largest shops, and I asked him, how's business these days? And he said, oh, you know, it's not so easy. Can I bless you? You know, if you ask people if you can bless them, nearly there's no one who will say, no, I don't know what I'm blessing. <laughs> so I said, okay, I'm going to bless you in the name of Jesus. I put in the shop, I put my hand on his hand, and I said, Lord, I ask, you to bless this man and his shop. And when I said amen, he said inshallah. And then I knew that he was a Muslim. <laughs> but you know, people are open for us to share the gospel with them. Amen? amen? Living as a natural testimony everywhere we go is what we can do for Jesus. On our workplaces, wherever God leads us, this is so interesting. And there are so many chances to share Jesus every day. I just want to share a, uh, two, these two verses that I gave to you. It's about following the footsteps of Jesus, being like him, trying to impact the world as Jesus, he impacted the world. And we have this Philippians 2. We can't go 
deep into it, but you have it so you can study it at home. <coughs> Philippians 2, we'll skip the first verses and start with verse 5. Your attitude should be the same as of Christ Jesus, who being in very nature, in the very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but he made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, so that the name of Jesus in that name, every knee should bow and in heaven on earth and under the earth and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. He was given the name above every name. And this is our message. We know this man who has the name above every name. And something happens when you s just speak the name of Jesus. The light goes on in darkness. Things change when Jesus comes into the atmosphere. So Jesus, he was the Son of God, but he came in a very different way to this world. He came in a humble way. And when we read in First um, Peter 2, it says uh, in verse 21, to this you were called because Christ has suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. So we are called to follow in the footsteps of Jesus. But if you look at Jesus compared to many other religions and many other things that's going on in the world, the power of God expresses itself, itself in weakness, what we consider weakness. He humbled himself. He became willing to die. And I often think of the rules in the kingdom of God are so much different than everything that's going on in this world. Our societies are built, if it's in politics or in business or in sports, that we climb the ladders to become powerful. And in order to reach the top, we have to remove those who are on the top to take their places. People, they want success and count weakness as a failure. But do you know that there is power in weakness? In sports, we know that many teams, you never hear of a team calling them the wimps of L.A. <laughs> or the little ones, or, you know... The weaklings or the sissies. <laughs> we call them bears or lions or buffaloes or strong, fierce animals we can identify with, you know. But in the kingdom of God, it's different. What we consider as strength can be weakness. And what we consider as weakness can be strength. Jesus, he speaks about if you want something... Now, just, you know, in, 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 in school I learned that 2 plus 2 is 4. Any of you learned the same? <laughs> <laughs> I grew up in Africa, so I learned that in Africa, too, but I discovered in Denmark the same. But when I entered the kingdom of God, I said, I can't use that anymore. The mathematics in the kingdom of God is different. 2 plus 2 is not always 4. Jesus says, if you have something and you give it away, then you are rich. I have something... I add something, I think I've got more. But in the kingdom of God, give and it shall be given to you. If you want to be seen, disappear like Jesus. You know, when you r read the story of Jesus, how he entered into this world, I think no man or no business company would have, would have uh, decided to do it this way. Now just imagine God wanted to send the king of kings the Lord of Lords, the President of Presidents, into this world. And what did he do? He sent him as a baby boy that was born and laid in a manger. 
God made it so difficult for himself before the whole event started. It was fail. It was a failure in the eyes of the world. But you know what happened? When Jesus was born in the manger, God wanted to announce it to the world. So who did he use? He used some shepherds from Bethlehem. And shepherds were not accountable even to testify in a court in those days. So here comes the shepherds and announced, the Savior of the Lord has been born. How do you know? Well, some angels came and told us. <laughs> Just imagine the situation, you know. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't even believable. And this is how God, he chose when Jesus came into this world and he started doing miracles and people were healed. He told them, don't tell anyone. We announce it. We want everyone to know. But Jesus was different. You remember when he fed the 5,000? Two fish, five loaves of bread, and thousands of people were, then they wanted to make him their minister of finance, you know. <laughs> just imagine having a minister of finance who could just do things like that, and the whole situation in the country could change. So they wanted to make Jesus their leader, but he disappeared. He didn't want any public attention. So, what he's actually telling us, if you want to be seen, hide. If you want to be known, disappear. If you want to have something, give it away. If you want to live, die. Be willing to die. The gospel is so different. And this is what Jesus, he is uh, telling us. In the kingdom of God, if you want to climb up, be willing to step down. If you want to own, give it away. So, he's teaching us about humility. And I believe if we, as the children of God, will follow in his footsteps and showing the world we are just human beings, we can we seem weak, but in us we have a strength that can change this whole world. Amen? Amen. There was once a missionary, and he and his Fellow missionaries have influenced my life. There were five missionaries in 1956 who went to Ecuador in South America. One of them was Jim Elliot. The words of Jim Elliot I've had in my heart since I was very young. And he said, He is no fool who gives what he cannot keep to gain what he cannot lose. This is what Jesus did. We give away what we cannot keep to gain what we cannot lose. And when Jesus, he died, he showed how powerful he was. Do you know, there's one thing that I recall when Jesus had been caught and tied up and they were nailing him to that cross and the people were mocking him and saying, if you are the Son of God, you could step down from that cross. You remember what he said? Jesus, he said that he had the power to call down supernatural task forces from heaven. He could call down the parachuters from heaven. And he says, 12 times 6,000 of them, these angels, that'll be 72,000, and they could have come and changed the whole situation and rescued Jesus. And if you read about the power one angel had, you just imagine 72,000. But instead, he gave up his power. He did not call for a rescue event. He said, I'm here to give my life. And he died in weakness. And the, the enemies rejoiced and thought it was over. They had finished this man, destroyed him. The beginning of Christianity was a failure. It seemed like that. But my friends, nobody had thought that Jesus would come back three days after the funeral. <laughs> Here he comes back, risen from the dead, and he started this movement that is going on in the world today. And the, the people that he picked, just imagine some of the people Jesus picked to change the world. I don't think any modern headhunter company would have picked any of those. Just imagine. <laughs> Can you imagine the treasurer? He stole from the, uh, he stole the money 
One of his disciples, when they caught Jesus in Gethsemane, John, we read about him, they caught him, but he left his clothes and fled naked. So here is a naked man running on the streets of Jerusalem. <laughs> He's one of those, Jesus said, I'm going to build my church on those guys. <laughs> we wouldn't have, and Peter who said, I'm, you can depend on me, Jesus. One day, standing in front of a young maid, he denied that he knew him. So they were weak people, but Jesus chose the ordinary, the weak, and he changed them, and he changed this world. And this is why he's going to change our world today through ordinary people like you and I. So you're called to be someone who can make a difference in this world. And I want to tell you this morning that let not the fear in the world grab you. Let not the things that are happening all around in the world uh, inti intimidate you. Jesus, he loves you. He has put the new life in you and I, and he's put you in places, in offices, in businesses, in working places, in the marketplace, because he wants to use each one of us. Even this day, Wednesday, the 4th of July, uh, June, <laughs> he's going to use us. So when you go out from here this morning, I want to encourage you, be open for what God can give you to say to your neighbor, to the guy you're working together with. You can change their lives by, just by being you. And remember, even if you feel weak and powerless, the power of God is strong in you, and he is going to do what nobody else can do. So I just want to say today that when Jesus came, he came in humility, in weakness, but he demonstrated the power of God through that. And this is what I'm seeing. I'm an normal human being. I've been weak. I was devastated. Some of you know my story. I was struck down in life. I never thought I'd be able to raise myself again. I lost my son, mom. I lost my wife. I was in a desert of grief for so many years. I could not even stand up alone. But in my weakness, God came and he did something. And I stand in front of you this morning testifying that even through weakness, through dark periods in our lives, God is faithful and he will never leave us. And I want to encourage you who are going through a deep tunnel, who are going through difficulties in life, God has not given up on you. He still loves you and he still wants to use you. And I want to encourage you and say, you can change the world by changing one life at a time and see the person God sends to you today is someone that you can influence by the grace of God. Amen. Father, I just want to bless my brothers here this morning. I want to thank you that you are doing a great miracle in the world today and especially in the Muslim world where millions are coming to know you. I thank you for the wave that's going over the coast of East Africa right now where hundreds and hundreds of Muslims and Imams are finding you. And I thank you, Lord, that you are equipping your people and sending us to a world where there is need around us every day. Bless and equip everyone in this room this morning and give us strength to go out and follow in your footsteps and change the world. Amen. guys honestly would say that when you think of the Muslim world and how you think how many have, have thought that they're they're rising up they're taking over I mean have had any kind of inclination in that in that way at all I mean I've heard it I've seen it, you know and, and you know you can thank uh, social media for uh, everybody and their brothers putting stuff out there and so on and so on right I'm so thankful that you know you have somebody that's in another part of the world that tells you the real deal. Reminds us who Christ is. Reminds us who we are. Greater is he that is within us than he that is of the world. Amen? Let's sing that other this chorus in the last song. My feet doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear 
doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. Do that again. My feet doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My feet doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My feet doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. Amen. Yes, Lord. Great is your faithfulness, O oh God. You wrestle with the sinner's restless heart. You lead us by still waters into mercy. And nothing can keep us apart. So remember your people. Remember your children. Remember your promise, O oh God. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough for Great is your love and justice, God of Jacob. You use a weak to lead the strong. You lead us in the song of your salvation. And all your people sing along. So remember. So remember your people, remember your children, remember your promise, O oh God. Your grace is enough, your grace is enough, your grace is enough for six there no there we go oh man thank you Sven Axel what a joy it is to have you here again it really really is you know we get uh, we get mired in our own world right our own little we have a very myopic view of God we really do and then when you see a man like this from halfway across the world show up and tell us how weary the Muslim faith is, and a lot of it is because of the work that God has done. Well, it's all because of the work that He's done. But you think about the war that we've been involved in since 
right? It's coming up on 18 years. And we've been doing a lot of work over there. And Sven and I were just talking. There's a lot of weariness in the Islamic community. And I think God is using us and that to bring them to himself. So it is through your testimony, it is through your example, it is through your leadership that this is happening. God has uniquely equipped you, my friend, and I thank you on behalf of all of us for sharing this morning. So you guys, remember what he said. You guys are all a light in a very dark world. Go out there and be yourselves. Be, be the witness that God has, has equipped you to be, and just be yourself, and you will be amazed at how God works through your life. So God bless you guys. Be yourselves. Go out there with the, without fear and just be yourselves. Um, you know what we do here. Grab a man. Put your hand around him. Give him a blessing, a blessing of authority to speak his truth today. Love you guys. See you next time.